Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Telka Clem, and I will be sharing today about our NAV quality management product and how you would go about setting it up and then using it. So let's jump into NAV. For those of you that have seen the later versions of NAV, 2015, 16, or 17, this is going to look very familiar. To those of you that have not, welcome to the later versions of NAV. I happen to be a huge NAV fan, and you will probably hear that today. Each of the opening screens, this is the client that you open when you start NAV. Each client, when it opens, has what's called a role center. And this blue title up at the very top tells me that I have come into my quality manager role center. Each of these role centers can be defined to each user so that each user can have a specific role. My quality manager would have this look. My accounting manager would have a totally different look. My bookkeeper would have a different look. And my warehouse receipt guy would have a totally different look. So the role centers are very specific to the user and what their tasks are. As a result of that, you'll see that what I'm looking at has to do with quality testing. I want to take us to the actual setup for the quality management. And the first thing we're going to start looking at is how we build the questions that we want to ask when we're testing. We have several options here that give us a lot of flexibility. You're going to find that this product has a lot of flexibility to it. When you say the word flexibility, that also comes with quite a bit of setup. However, to increase that provides this product for NAS does provide us with a lot of default options so that we have some information to start with and we're not starting with blank screens. I'm going to open my PR-Q001 question here and look at what this card looks like. Standard NAV functionality, I have a code, and then I have a question scope. I have two choices. It can either be a document or an item. The difference in the two is if I set it a document question, I will get that question only once on my check sheet. This question is, was the packing list complete? I wouldn't have a packing list for every item I was going to test. I would have one packing list. So therefore, if I set my question scope to document, I'm only going to get this question once and at the top. I then have a description, and I have a second line for a description if I have a very long question. And then I have my types. The type for this question is a Boolean question, so that really my only two options are yes or no. Was the packing slip complete? I also have some other options here. Look up numeric and text, and I am going to discuss those, but I want to discuss them when I actually open each type of these cards so you'll see the type of information that goes to each type of question. Also, with the Boolean card, I'm going to have a Boolean accepted score. Each of these questions has a score that we're going to give it a numeric value. This is how we end up at the end with our score on whether we will accept this batch or not. This question has a score of 10. Let me open the next question here. The next question, is the finish of the items correct? It is an item scope question, so that I'm going to get this question for every item that is in my testing quantity. And it's a lookup type. When I have a lookup type, I'm going to have this area down at the bottom show up where I then give the user a multiple choice of what they're looking to score this product with. So my choices here are black, gray, or gray metal. You'll notice that I've got a checkbox under the target value, both for the gray and the gray metal. I'm saying that both of those are acceptable. However, for my score, 
I'm going to score the gray metal at 15 and just the plain gray at 5. So gray metal will get a higher score on my testing than just the regular gray wheel. When I look at the diameter of a product question, this is a numeric answer. And when I have a numeric type question, I give it a target value. For this question, my target is 20. And that could be 20 centimeters or 20 inches. You set that standard. And then down at the bottom, I give it a range if I would like to. Either it has to be 20, or I can say from 19.75 to 20.25 is acceptable, and it has a score of 25. The last type is just a text type. And what it allows to do, it will view the question on the check sheet, and it will allow the user to enter a text so that if you ask the question and then you want just a comment or some sort of text to go along with that test. You can score it, but in general, the text is just used for notes or answering type things. All of these questions that I just showed you, the ones for the PR, we looked at one, two, and three, all had to pertain with the receipt of an item the system has some numbered PR on the front of it, which would tell us that it is as a result of a purchase receipt. But you'll also notice up here that I've got an MAN. And these questions have to do with manufacturing. Did the operation complete successfully? Does the product match the spec sheet? Did the operation complete in time? All three of these are Boolean type questions. They don't have to be Boolean questions, but they are. And they have to do with the actual process of production instead of the actual item. So they would be more document type questions having to do with the entire batch instead of individual item testing. Now you can have a combination where you have the questions that have to do with the operation itself, and then questions against the output of the production order. Now that we've looked at the questions themselves, let's look at how we gather the questions. We're going to group these questions in what's called a question set. Not really trying to oversimplify it, but question sets are just groupings of our measurement questions. And for each question, we're going to give it a weight in the set. So I'm going to open the PR set 001 so we can look at it. Of course, we've got our code in our description. And then up underneath here, I have the question set lines. And I have question 1, 2, and 3. You're going to notice that these questions now have a weight and a maximum score. This maximum score is created by multiplying the weight times the score that we gave the question. If you'll remember, we gave the question, was the packing list complete, a score of 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. Is the finish of the items correct? You'll remember the gray steel, we gave it a 15. So 15 times 20 is 300. And the diameter of the product, we gave it a score of 25. If it was between 19.75 and 20.25, and against the question weight, we get 250. So from the weight, we're able to say the question, is the finish of the items correct, weighs more in our question set than whether the packing slip was complete or whether the diameter of the product is a certain number of value. So we also weigh that. We see down here at the bottom we have a total for our question weight, we have a total for our maximum score, and then we have a weighted average that is associated with the question set. Once we have our question sets built, and you want to keep in mind when you're creating both the questions and the question sets 
what am I wanting to test? What am I wanting to measure for my items or my production? And then design those questions around that. Once we have those question sets together, we move to what's called a measurement template. And the measurement template is going to give us a lot of options to start building these triggers that we're going to want to set off in order to create an incident. So if I open my measurement template card, you're going to see that I have a code. I have a description. This is a quality management for purchase receipts of raw materials. I'm referencing a table number. Your Western consultant will be able to help you with this. He also can get the information from the samples that are in the quality management module. Table number 121 references the purchase receipt line table so that when we get a receipt, this template, when assigned to an item, would then trigger to create a measurement. My sample method, I have three options. I can either do a fixed amount, a percentage amount, or an AQL. The fixed amount I could set to any number I want. Let's say, example, if I received in 100, but I only want to test five, and I always want to just test five. So I can set it to five, and I will always test five, unless my quantity is less than five, and then I would test the entire batch. That's a fixed amount. The percentage is based on do I want to do 5%, do I want 10%, 20%, so forth and so on. And then the AQL is the industry standard acceptable quality level method. And it uses both the inspection level and the quality level amount to determine how many of the receipt or the production are we going to test. There is about three pages worth of tables to help both you and your consultant rightly choose these fields. And that would be a different session because it's quite lengthy. But you can have this accepted quality level where it is specific to each receipt or each production. Then I assign my question set. This is the question set that we've been working with a little bit, the PRSET001. And then I tell the system, how am I going to create check sheet? If it's blank, it's going to be one check sheet per receipt. If it's per lot number, it'll be per lot. If it's serial number, it'll be per serial number. When I create a measurement for an incident, I get a measurement header, and then I get lines. If I have told it that I want to create check sheet for each serial number, I will have multiple lines on that check sheet, one for each serial number that I'll be testing. I also have a due date formula here. It's set to two days on this measurement template, but I can set it either as quick or as long as I would like it. This is telling us we have two days to complete this test. I want to log the interaction. I can print the check sheet automatically or use the screen from NAV. And then this is connection to the workflow in NAV to then trigger this process. My rating down here, you will see that I've got some ranges of what I consider good, average, and bad. This is used for reporting purposes, but you'll notice that I've got it set 35, 40, 20, 35, 0, 20. These aren't correct anymore. I did some changing and manipulating of the weight and the scores of my questions. And so my total max score now can be 650. So I want to adjust these ratings. And I'm going to say from 600 to 650 would be good, maybe from 550 to 600 would be average, and then everything from 0 to 550 is not going to be acceptable. This will be information that would be stored about the check sheet that you could then report on down the road.